different licks or sequences, whatever you want to call them. And they're going to be all based off the key of E minor, which is the same as the key of G major. Um, and I've got some jam tracks, some drum tracks that I'm going to be giving you as well so you can practice along. But please understand, we're going to be looking at these from a technical standpoint of how to play them at the speeds that I'm playing them at. But also, we're going to be looking at them from a creative standpoint. So if they're a little bit too fast for you, it's okay if you slow them down. If you're looking at a particular lick, but you're only interested in using a part of that that lick that I'm showing you, again, that's all okay. All we're trying to do is open the door to create it, creativity a little bit wider so you've got something new to try and practice and a unique way of looking at your fretboard. Alright, so in this first lick, what we're doing is we're looking at something again in E minor. Um, it's at 115 beats per minute. That's how fast the, the drum track is that I'm playing along with. Now, you can play it faster, you can play it slower, you can do whatever you want with it, but we're going to look at this from two different perspectives. Number one, how to play it, and number two, what you could utilize it for in a creative space, okay? So the first thing to do is just talk about two things I want to show you. The lick itself looks like this. So, you know, I'm thinking about E minor right here. So I'm just kind of seeing that position right there, whatever you'd like to call that, but that's what I'm seeing is 10, 8, 7. But instead of just playing it as a scale like I'm doing right now, what I always like to do is I like to get creative in a couple of different ways. Number one is I love wider intervals. And I don't think consciously about a fourth or a fifth or something like that. As much as I do, I'm just trying to make something that is a bit more interesting to the ear. It's more fun for me to play. It's what I enjoy doing. And I'll oftentimes, it's more interesting for the listener. And what I mean by that is, let's say we were playing in 4-4 four, four time, which I am. Okay, but we make a lick that fits very nicely into the 4-4 box, something like this. If I was going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, you'll notice that one, two, three, four are all getting these accented notes, which there's nothing wrong with, nothing at all, but it's just not very exciting. So what I try and do is I try and change up the style of the lick so I'm using those wider intervals, but I'm also um, utilizing key accented notes, but they're not all winding up on one and two and three and four. Let me show you what I mean. So with this particular lick, what we've got here is... Now again, you can you can practice this and come back anytime you want. I'm just going to break it down a little bit for you if you're interested. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So what I've got here, if I think about it, I've got one and two and three and. Now see that? My, my high notes here that are kind of making this interesting aren't just winding up on one, two, three, and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So this is just... I don't know that I'm conscious of it when I'm doing these sorts of things, but I'm just trying to make something that sounds a little more unique and it's not so straight. So let's try and break this down and play it together, okay? So the first thing is, is how am I picking this? I'll put my pickup selector down there. Okay, let's just start with that. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with this down pick. And then I'm going to another down pick. Now, you might change this. Yours might be different, but I'm going to a down pick on the first string, seventh fret, which means that when I go back to the nine of the third string, because I'm skipping over the second string, I'm going to do that with an upstroke, because I just left with a down. So that's got to be an upstroke right there. And then I'm going to do a pull off to the seven, which again is giving me a rest in terms of picking. So then I go back to the 10, but I'm going to play that with a down pick. Now I'm going to pull off to the 7, so again it's giving my pick a rest. And you could just start by practicing that over and over and over. 
Remember to try and keep the other strings quiet as much as you can, okay? Okay, now when I get done with that, I've got to play the nine of the third string and the one of the uh, first string again, or the seven of the first string, excuse me. Now I do both of those with down picks. I'm just jumping over the second string. And then I'm going to do this pull off again from 9 to 7. That's going to wind up being an upstroke again. And then I end with these pull offs 8, 7, 8, 7, and then the 9. Now I'm playing those as down, up, and down, but it wouldn't really matter because you've got a pull off in between each one. So if you think about it, the big trick here is, is that whenever you're skipping a string, you've got to figure out the best way of getting back to that. Now, by nature, when I play, whether I'm jamming or writing something, I often use these pull-offs in my playing. I'm, I'm a very, you know, sometimes I pick a lot, sometimes I play a lot of legato stuff. But these pull-offs are really nice because they're giving you a chance to breathe. They're giving your pick a chance to breathe a little bit. So the, the trick here is, is making sure that your pull-offs because we don't have any hammer-ons in this one, but make sure that your pull-offs are really dynamic, right? You're really getting an effective pull-off when you do these. And keep everybody quiet as much as humanly possible when you play, so everything sounds nice and clean and crisp. Now here's the trick. So when I get done, I'm ending on this nine here, and I'm doing a pull off to seven. But the seven is technically the downbeat. It's the first beat to start all over again. I am not picking that. Okay, so when I go. Okay, I'm doing a pull off to the seven, which is actually the beginning, and then I'm doing a hammer on back to the nine. So that's the only hammer on I really have there. I guess I have that hammer on on the first one every time, right? It's the seven and nine. So that would be the one hammer on that I'd have in this entire thing. So the trick here is, is as you're hearing this, I have to really be conscious of, let me grab a metronome here. See, I got to be real conscious of the beat itself to make sure that I'm lining everything up. And that's why I love to practice with a drum track or a metronome. And I use a metronome a lot. Now, for the, the thing I'm showing you, of course, I've got a drum track that I'm using. But when I'm developing licks or patterns or whatever you want to call them, if I need to, I pull out the metronome and I practice it over and over and over to make sure that I can line things up because that's what makes it sound effective. Okay? So... Go ahead and explore this, see what you can do with it, um, but understand that from the creative per perspective of something like this, you can go in there and maybe just grab something, even if it's just the... You know, something like that, or whatever it is that you like. See, I can make up just a million different little things from that. I just make sure that I don't throw myself in the weeds when I do that, because then all of a sudden I've got 17 little things and I'm not practicing any one thing. So I try and start with something that I really like, and then I develop it. And then, um, and then I kind of make it part of my playing. So if I was, if I was jamming, I might use this entire thing, but I, I am very much aware of that string skipping concept. And I might go into something else from there. So see what you can do with it. And hopefully you can come up with something pretty fun.
right, now we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're still going to be in E minor, and we're still going to be in at, at 115 beats per minute. But now what we're doing is we're we're um, we're force fitting a lick to fit into a particular amount of time. And this is more something that you would see with uh, Joe Satriani or maybe Ingve Malmsteen or something like that. Now I'm playing this all legato. Um, and the reason is, is for the strength purpose of trying to learn a technique like this, but you could pick them or do whatever you want. So let's take a look at this thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play this lick. So let's just break it down string by string. The first thing here I've got is a pull off from 12, 10 to 8 and then 12, 10 to 8. Now you could pick these, you can you can do whatever's comfortable for you. I'm just picking the first one of each sequence. Now when I get to that 8, what I'm going to do is slide down to the 7. And then I'm going to do hammer-ons back to the 8 and 10 and then pull off back to the 8 and 7 so it looks like this. Now the trick is, is as you're doing this, try and keep everything as straight as possible, meaning in terms of your your rhythm, right? So you ba da 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 da. You know, sometimes your fingers, depending on the strength of of each finger, it's sometimes kind of hard to keep them even in terms of their rhythm, and also their dynamic. Try and make sure that they're all getting kind of the same dynamic. Okay, so don't really worry about trying to count it at this point. What we're going to do is we're going to force this into a, a particular amount of time here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the next string and I'm going to do this. So I'm on five, or excuse me, nine, seven, five. So I'm doing pull-offs, hammer-ons, and then pull-offs again. So it looks like this. See that? Then I'm going to go to this string, I'm going to do the same thing that I started with. So... Okay, so I have this now. string, do my little slide, just like I did here, right, and I did there, and then I'm done. So if you think about it, I've got this group, and then I've got this, So if I put the whole thing together, now oftentimes I'll play this entire sequence without picking anything but the very first note. Sorry. Okay, so I'm just picking that first note to get things started and then I don't pick again. I just hold the strings quiet as I play. So it makes for a great legato workout, hammer-ons and pull-offs, okay? Now if that's really hard for you, you need to find where the best places are to pick to interject a pick in there. And the most logical place would be every time you switch a string, but you might need to pick more in there. Now you could take this entire thing... And pick it all if you wanted to. You know, something like that, and that would be fine too. I just, I love shaking things up. So I've got certain licks that I'll pick everything, and then I've got certain licks that I'll do legato with. Um, you'll notice that the first, you know, lick that we did was very systematic in terms of its timing. Now all of a sudden we've got this, which again, you see 
Paul Gilbert and all kinds of different players like that, you know, Guthrie Govan or whoever it is, these players will play something and they're just, they're shoving it into an amount of time. So that's what we want to do with this lick is just look at squeezing it into the rhythm that we were given, right? The 115 beats per minute. So you might again just take one section of this, right? You might just do something where you go. You know, like Satriani. You know, it always seems like he stops on the top side when he does these kind of... You know, there's lots of cool things like that that you can do too. So explore it, have some fun with it, and don't be in a hurry. See if there's something really valuable that you could get out of this. All right, so now what we're going to do is bump the metronome up or the drum track up a little bit to 130 beats per minute. And this particular idea is going to be an E minor, but we're leaving the traditional E minor scale a little bit to make it sound a bit more exotic. So I think this would be a really great idea that you could use when you're playing something hard rock or metal or something like that. So let's take a look at this and just break it down. First of all, the entire thing is going to be picked, okay? What we're going to be doing is playing one, or uh, excuse me, 12, 14, 15 on the first string. And I'm going to be using these three fingers, okay? Normally, you know, we learn, you know, you have four fingers for four frets. So if you're playing 12, 14, 15, you'd probably use one, three, and four. Okay, in this case, we need something else. And the reason is because we, we have the rest of the lick that we need to get to. So what we're going to do is we're going to play 12, 14, 15. And we're going to do that five times. <laughs> And then we're going to end with a zero, or a, a 12, excuse me. Okay, now if you think about my picking pattern, I'm just doing alternate picking the entire time, so I'm ending on an upstroke. Because the next thing I'm going to do is exactly the same idea, but I'm just going to change my fingering. I'm going to go 12, 15, 17. Okay, so when I play this, what I want you to notice is I actually play my first finger, my middle finger, and my pinky. Now that might feel really uncomfortable for you, but you'll get the idea as we keep going. You do not have to do the same thing I'm doing. I just want to explain to you why this is happening. So when I go to this 12, 15, 17, I'm using first, middle, and pinky. Because again, the lick is going to continue on, okay? Okay, because the next thing I'm gonna do is 12, 15, 18. Same exact idea, and then 12, 15, 19. Okay, so if you look at this, if we put the whole thing together, So really what makes this kind of tricky is you're doing five patterns and you're ending with a zero and then you're starting again with a zero. Now in my head, I don't really separate the two. I just think of it as da 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 so that's how I think about it in my head, if that makes sense. But it's really a fun exercise and yet an effective lick that you can use. Okay, so that's kind of a fun one to practice too. So see what you can do with that. Okay, 
in this next lick, we're going to be looking at some larger intervallic patterns again. We're going to be incorporating some arpeggios and some more movement across the fretboard. We're still going to be in E minor, okay? But let's just take a look at this and see how this moves and see how it's going to work best for you, and then we'll start building up the speed. So the first thing we've got here is we're going to play 12 and 8 on the uh, first string. Now I do that as a pull-off, and then I'll go to the second string, and I'll do the same thing. Do a pull-off again. And then what I do is I drop down and I play 7-8-7 seven, seven as a slide and then a hammer-on pull-off. Which in itself is already something that's very useful for you. But then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go to the ninth fret of the third string, back to the 7, back to the 9, do a pull-off to the 7. So I have... And then I'm going to continue on. Now what I'm going to do is play 10, 9, 7 on the 4th string. Now right there what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide up from the 10 with my pinky to the 12 of the 5th string. Which situates me for the next thing which is moving into this small arpeggio. Now this note right here, which is the 10th fret of the 4th string, that's my downbeat, okay? So if I think about it as 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... When I get to this note right here, this is the 1 all over again. So when I practice something like this, what I do is I take the metronome and I just practice over and over and over and I start developing where that downbeat needs to be so I can work on the first part. <laughs> You know, just keep lining it up with that metronome as I play, and then that's how I start developing the speed. Okay, so now we're going to keep going. So now I'm here, Got I've got one, two, so there I'm, I'm going to the ninth fret of the third string. One, two, three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to head up, and I'm going to do a slide from 12 to 14. And I'm going to use my third finger for that slide. You could use your pinky, and it would still be just fine. Okay, so I have... Just like that, or... Okay, now once I get there, I'm into my standard sort of E minor first position, if you will. And I'm just going to play this. So I have... Okay, so 14, 12, pull off, down to my E, then I'm going to work my way back up, 12, 14, 12, 13, 15, and then I do my bend, so I have... So everything is just getting 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... So again, my, my goal isn't to end this thing on a downbeat or something, and if I wanted to, I could certainly shorten it up or make it longer or whatever I need to do. It's just trying to dial it in. Over and over and over until it starts feeling more comfortable. So this is a really fun lick, and again, you don't have to play it as straight eighth notes like I'm doing. You could always break it up and do something else. Um, you could just borrow a certain idea like... You know, something just if you just took this part you know you might just like something like that right or if you're coming off you, know, you might just like a piece of that i'm always studying other solos and licks and ideas from different players and my big thing, and I know I've told you this a million times, but my big thing is, is I don't always use the whole thing. I just grab something in there that makes the most sense to me, and then I'll utilize that in my own playing. And sometimes it'll become something else, right? Which is where a lot of the stuff that you're learning right now comes from, is just a spark from somewhere else, and then I develop into something a little bit bigger and then share it with you. And then you can kind of decide what you want to do from there. So this is a really fun one to check out as well.
All right, so here is the final lick that we're going to be looking at, or pattern, whatever you want to call this. And again, this is going to be using some wider intervallic movements, some arpeggios. These are all things that I use very commonly in my playing. So let's break down what's actually happening here. I'm going to be doing a pull-off from 19 to 15, and then again 19, 15 on the second string. I love those wider intervals, as you're probably noticing. Now right here, what I'm going to do is a little arpeggio. Uh, where I'm going to be going from the 15th fret of the 2nd string, which is where I left off with the pull-off. And then I'm going to play 16, 17. Now, for me, I'm going to do those as upstrokes. So I'm doing down pick, pull-off, down pick, pull-off, up, up. Now, you don't have to do it that way, but it just feels really comfortable for me, especially when we get into the second part of this lick. You'll kind of see why, but... Please understand that you can always readjust this to whatever's going to feel best for you, depending on the speed that you're go you're trying to get to and just comfortability. It makes all the difference in the world. So I've got... So after I do those two pull-offs, I'm pulling off from the, the 17th fret, which you can see my third finger's on, to my first finger on the 14th fret. So I have... And then I'm going to slide back to the to the 12th fret. Okay. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing starting on the 16th fret of the 3rd string. I'm going to do those pull-offs. Up, up on the 14, 15 here. And then I do my pull-off to 12. The only difference is I'm not going to slide. I'm actually just going to stop there. So I have... And then... Now, instead of just stopping, what I mean is I'm not going to go this direction. What I'm going to do is a hammer-on back to the 15. So I have... Okay, now that 15 is the beginning of an arpeggio moving this direction. So I'm going to play 15, which is what I left off on with that hammer-on. 14, and then 12. So I have... Now once I get to the 12, I'm going to do a hammer on to four or 16 and then go to this string and do the same thing. So I have... So again, I've just got that nice wide interval in there that sounds kind of cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come back. So I did 12, 16, 12, 16 as hammer-ons. And I'm just coming back with a pull-off on this one. And then 16, 12. Okay, so now I've got... Then I'm going to slide up to the 14. Then I'm going to play... I'm going to go right back to the 17, 16, 15. Now I'm playing them downward. Doing my hammer on to 19. And then 15, 19. So I'm coming right back up the way I went down. Okay, one more time for you. Again, your job is to figure out what feels most comfortable when you're picking this. Which which direction feels good to you? But again, you can notice it's just a straight eighth note pattern. Da 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 da. That's the idea. So I want to play it slow and develop my timing and really fix the bugs. Figure out which way I need to pick this to make it feel most comfortable. And if you've done any work like this, you know that somewhere in there, there's a transition from playing it super slow when you could virtually pick it anyway, to developing it at a bit faster pace when, and once you get there, you really have to start making some conscious decisions on whether you're going to use a down or an up or something like that. Again, out of comfort and out of necessity by the speed that you're trying to achieve it at. My job isn't to tell you that you have to play these things fast. That's entirely up to you. But just be aware of that. Because reading the tab and watching my fingers is one thing, and you can certainly do that. 
but developing a comfortability so you're able to play it the way you want and execute it comfortably is an entirely different discussion. And so use what I'm doing as a, as a palette, but understand that when I play, oftentimes the way I'm picking certain things kind of changes too. It depends on where I'm coming from. It depends on where I'm going to. Um, but I do like to break them down and kind of think about them. So hopefully that helps you a little bit as well. Stay positive, keep practicing, and I'll talk to you soon.